Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Furlong, and today we're going to take a look at how skeletal muscles contract. As we talk about how skeletal muscles contract, you'll have to bear with me for a little bit while you watch this video. It can get really detailed. There's lots of things going on. I hope that the animations help you understand what is happening here. And we'll spend some time in class going more into detail about what is really happening during these contractions. A skeletal muscle contraction is a specific sequence of events needed to occur in order for a muscle fiber to contract. So step one has to happen before step two which happens before step three, etc. If step three never happens, then the remaining steps won't happen either. They are all dependent on each other. So let's take a look at these steps. First off, we need to have a nerve impulse. So this will travel down a motor neuron axon. Without this nerve impulse, the muscle will never be able to contract. When the nerve impulses reaches the synaptic vesicles at the end of the axon, a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, or ACH, is going to be released. Remember that the neuron doesn't actually touch the muscle fiber at that neuromuscular junction. So the acetylcholine is what is going to jump that gap. It will attach to acetylcholine receptors on the sarcolemma. It is then going to cause the impulse to continue down the muscle fiber. And then that acetylcholine is going to be broken down by an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase. Some of that is going to be reabsorbed and some will just be destroyed. So now that nerve impulse is in the muscle fiber, it's going to cause the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release calcium ions. Remember, sarcoplasmic reticulum stores calcium temporarily. The calcium will attach to the troponin protein, which will then move the tropomyosin protein and uncover the active site on the actin. This will then allow for the myosin heads to attach to the active site on the actin filament. The myosin is then going to pull on the actin by those cross bridges that were formed. This requires energy, and a lot of it, and that energy is going to be coming from ATP. As the myosin is pulling on the actin, the muscle actually gets shorter and the muscle contracts. So the muscle will stay contracted as long as calcium is present. At some point, that calcium is going to be reabsorbed by the sarcoplasmic reticulum. When that happens, the active site will be covered up, which means those cross bridges will be broken, and the actin will slide back into its original position. So this is called the sliding filament theory of muscle contraction. I know it's a lot. It's really heavy into some basic protein design. It's not the easiest thing in the world to understand, but hopefully, as we do some more activities in class, you'll get the idea of how this actually allows us to move our muscles. And I'll see you in class.